1945, immediate family and extended family, I was the only one who survived this battle. Thank you, sir. It's, it's an important point about military history, which I didn't stress, but which is, which is worth elaborating. The agreement between the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany of August 1939, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, and then the subsequent agreement of September 1939, after they both invaded Poland, the Treaty on Borders and Friendship, established a mutually fruitful relationship in which the Soviet Union was delivering the things which Germany did not have, oil and grain. Um, and in return, Germany was not attacking the Soviet Union, also supplying certain industrial goods. The point of the question, if I understand it correctly, is that this was a situation which could have lasted for much longer than it did. Um, the, the Germans, once they had access to Soviet fuel and Soviet food, were self-sufficient. Um, if they had chosen to just prosecute a war against the West, it's, it's hard to see how they would have lost so, as quickly as they did. Or to put the point in a more fundamental way, we in America don't generally see the war from a Soviet point of view because it's uncomfortable for us. From the Soviet point of view, there was a German ally for two years, and then there was a terrible six months of concern between June and December of 41, and then there was an American ally. In other words, they swapped out the German ally for an American ally. Their alliances reverse. Right? That's just the way it is. It's not comfortable for us, but that's just the way it is. And then we played a contributing part, not a significant, but a contributing part in the defeat of the Wehrmacht in Europe. The Soviets played the main part. But the gentleman, the gentleman refers to it as a mistake. If the Germans had only wanted to win a war in Western Europe, it was a mistake. But Hitler would not have been Hitler if he didn't want to conquer this vast empire in the East. That plan was inscribed in, his, in the genes of his ideology. So from a, a, a military perspective, if he had just wanted to win a war, absolutely. But because the dream was of this colony in the East, there had to be a war in the East. And of course, that is what June did. Can you address, sir, uh, why Hitler and Stalin were both anti-Semites? I mean, they probably were for different reasons, but why were they? Oh. The, 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 the question about Hitler is, is the much more important one. And you, know, you, could, you could address it at different levels. You could try to address it biographically, which is very tricky. You know, traditionally, biographers have focused on his, his youth in the Habsburg monarchy, his experience of the, 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 the pragmatic and effective political anti-Semitism of Karl Luger and the Christian social movement, um, the anti-Semitism of, of Georg Schoener. More recently, historians have begun to argue, and I'm swayed by this myself, that his, his millenary and catastrophic anti-Semitism had more to do with the anti-Semitism of Germans, Baltic Germans, who were fleeing the Bolshevik Revolution, which they had defined in kind of apocalyptic terms as a Jewish takeover of, of the planet. Um, however, the biographical question may be answered, and I think we'll never know. We, you can't answer those things definitively. Any citizen for Hitler served a very important ideological purpose. Um, it, it didn't allow him to win office. It, the Great Depression allowed him to win office. Poor politics on the part of the German left allowed him to win office. But it did give him a way of penetrating German society. Anti-Semitism meant that you had, uh, you had an angle into property. You had an angle into people's domestic relations. It was a way of turning um, an already feeble and, and stumbling republic into an authoritarian state. And then, as a way of seeing the world, it explained to Hitler and to more and more Germans why it was that Germany was in the position that it was, why it wasn't a world power. A theory of a Jewish international conspiracy explained why both the West and the East seemed to be against Germany. And that theory was all the more necessary as Germany found itself after December 1941 at war with both the Soviet Union and the US. How can you explain the strange alliance between the Soviet Union and the US? You could say, well, 
um, as a result of a horrifyingly stupid German strategy. But that's obviously not an acceptable answer. The answer, um, the Jews are in charge of both the Soviet Union and the US, that they're in charge of both communism and finance capitalism, is a much more functional answer. And in, in on the Eastern Front, as I only could very, very briefly try to suggest, the idea that the Germans were the, that the Jews were the source of all evil um, had took on a specific form, which is the Jews are responsible for the Soviet system. So if you kill them, then the Soviet system will fall. That was the reasoning. Just like the Einsatzgruppen killed Polish elites when they went into Poland in 1939, they killed the people they regarded as Soviet elites in 1941, chiefly male Jews of military age. When the Soviet Union doesn't fall, you then, you then begin a second wave of terror, which kills even more Jews, partly on the same quote-unquote reasoning. Um, but because ultimately, Hitler's view of the Jews was not dependent upon um, events that go this or that way, because ultimately it was really the foundation of it all. The total destruction of the Jews for Hitler could seem like an end, an end in itself, I think. Stalin's story is really a very different one. Um, Stalin was a man of many prejudices, of quick judgments, of rough jokes, but he also was a man who came out of an essentially multinational movement. Um, the Bolshevik party was not a Russian party. It was full of Armenians, Georgians, Megrelians, Jews, Poles, Ukrainians, you name it. And he, he was part, it wasn't just de facto, it was also ideologically multinational or cosmopolitan. And the Soviet leadership was not Russia um, by any stretch of the imagination uh, until very, very late in the day. I mean, the, the Soviet Union against which the, the US fought a Cold War had a pretty Russian leadership. But for the, the first half of Soviet history, not especially. And Stalin himself is the best example. Stalin's bodyguard for a while was Jewish. The man who shaved Stalin, um, you know, not with an electric razor, but with a blade, mm -hmm. right? Every morning was Jewish. Um, admittedly, that person was later purged and shot, but <laughs> nevertheless, if he had been an anti-Semite of the sort of organic Hitlerian variety, he wouldn't have been surrounded by Jews his whole adult life, as he was, basically. The last chapter of my book tries to explain why the Soviet Union took a turn to anti-Semitism during and after the war. And it has to do with the encounter with Nazi Germany. It has to do with the Holocaust itself, which meant that the, the Soviet story of what the Germans were doing, that the Germans were fighting as fascists against the homeland of socialism, that as a result of the struggle, Soviet citizens suffered. That Soviet story could never be completely true because of the Holocaust, because there was one group on Soviet territory that suffered so much more than any other group. And Soviet citizens suffered enormously. Yellow Russians, Ukrainians, and others, the, the, the Russians and Leningrad suffered horribly. But nevertheless, everybody knew that what the, the fate of the Jews was special. Everyone knew that. And so long as that was true, um, the, the Soviet account of the war itself was impossible to sustain. And so the, the, the truth about the Holocaust had to be tamped down. It had to be made to fit this larger story. And the people who wanted to talk about the Holocaust, which were a lot of Soviet Jewish poets and writers and so on, um, those people had to be repressed, as, as they were. And then in addition to that, you have the geopolitical factor, which is the state of Israel. When Israel comes into being, the Soviets think it's going to be a friendly left-wing state. Stalin realizes fairly early on that it's in fact going to be an American client. And then Soviet policy towards Israel switches from being friendly support, which it was in the very beginning. Soviet support was crucial to that.